Dixie Furniture Company was founded in 1946 at 533 King Street by Abe Kirstein. Abe Kirstein was born in 1897 in a small village near Warsaw, Poland. Because of religious persecution, he fled Poland, arriving in Charleston, South Carolina in 1920, penniless and carrying all his worldly possessions in a small suitcase. Three days later, he was walking the streets of Charleston, peddling soft goods. He worked long and hard hours, and in just a few years was able to afford a horse and buggy, and finally a Model, model T auto to continue his peddling. In January 1946, he opened a very small furniture store. And so he sold the property to my father, and my father went home, told my mother about it. My mother said, I want you to go downtown and broad I want you to record this, get this trans transaction recorded. It was making it official. Otherwise, the fellow could back out if he had any change of heart, you know. And uh, that's exactly what happened. The next day, he came to my father. He wanted to back out of the deal. He wanted to offer my father $10,000, just like that, on the spot, just to back out of it. And by then, my father said, no, I want that piece of property. I bought it with good intentions. And it had not been for my mother. Oh, she said, I'm not going to give you anything to eat. I'm not going to feed unless you go there right now and get this property, this deed recorded. And we, he did that, and, and my mother had that good sense to, to make him do that. And uh, anyway, so that's how we got to, to have ownership of these properties. By 1947, his three sons, Sammy, Lois, and Sol, had either finished college or completed military service and joined their parents in the struggling business. In 1948, Dixie Furniture's first expansion occurred with the moving into an adjacent, remodeled, slightly larger building. But in 1952, tragedy struck. A fire completely destroyed the grossly uninsured building and its contents, leaving the Kirstein family heavily in debt and apparently out of business. The people next door, there's a man's clothing store next door. He called my father up at 7 o'clock. He just closed up the store. I was not married. I came home and said, I don't want an alarm. You have a little smoke coming out of your building. I don't think they can see you, but come on down. Actually, it's far more serious than that led on to that point. We came in the building an inferno, just the flames shooting up from the building and boy my my, my our collective hearts were now <laughs> you know, everything we owned was tied up in that building. Where some families may have seen devastation, the Kershine saw an opportunity to expand. About a month later workmen were erecting a new building on the site of the old Dixie furniture, but double its size. In late nineteen fifty two the new Dixie furniture opened its doors. It was all made possible because of Mr. Abe's credit reputation. My father's banker, named fell in the Hugh Lane Senior, called my father up the next day and said, Abe, don't worry about a thing. He had very, very good credit. He was very, very serious about paying bills and uh, not ruining his, his reputation. Mr. Lane said, Abe, whatever you need, don't worry about it. I'll loan you whatever you need. Just build a nice building, build a nice warehouse while you're at it. That's exactly what happened. It took about eight months, seven, eight months for a new building to be took in the other two pieces of property. So this entire area will now go be one store. After remodeling, the family worked very hard and the business prospered. A warehouse was built on Huger Street and a second Dixie Furniture opened its doors in 1961 on Rivers Avenue in North Charleston. Extensive remodeling to both the exterior and interior of the King Street location was completed in 1977. You know, the, yeah. the future of Dixie, I mean, hopefully there will certainly be a future of Dixie Furniture. The, the future really depends on the location itself. I mean, Dixie proper, if you will, Dixie Furniture, hopefully it'll still be here in 10 years. I might need a job. I gotta, you know, I've got to do something. But, I mean, specifically this location, um, Probably not in 10 years. I mean, the streets changed so much over, over the last several years, and we've been here since 46, so 67 plus years. Um, and there was a time, and I don't know if Dad touched on it, there was a time they were, you know, 20, 30 furniture stores on this street. And now, and doing the same thing that we do, you know, credit stores, now there's us. What started as a poor immigrant selling linens out of a horse and buggy has turned into the leading family operated furniture business in the Tri County area. And while its days on King Street may be limited, the fourth generation of Jerry, Stanford, Michael, and David are sure to keep the business prospering throughout the Lowcountry.